Welcome to the channel. So what I have here is the Samsung Galaxy A31. It costs 14,990 pesos or 240 US dollars for the 6 GB RAM and 128 GB storage variant. If you have seen my hands-on video, then you already know that the biggest question mark about this phone is the chipset. If you haven't seen it yet, the TLDR version is that how much you are willing to sacrifice performance for a Super AMOLED display. But first, let's talk about the good things about this phone. There are two things that stood out to me with the Galaxy A31, and first is that Super AMOLED display. I've tested tons of LCD phones, but this might be the first time I've tested a Super AMOLED phone in the mid-range category. I was a bit skeptical at first, to be honest, especially since I'm coming from the Galaxy Note 9, but I was really surprised how good looking all the displays are. Like my flagship daily driver, this one gets really punchy, bright and crisp. I also like the 6.4 inch size which is on the taller side thanks to the 20 by 9 aspect ratio. I can easily use and reach the top and side portions of the display with one hand partly because of how lightweight this phone despite the massive battery inside. And since we're looking at a smaller display, the 1080p resolution shows no boxy pixels. You still have that teardrop notch instead of the pinhole cutout that's becoming a trend lately and you also have that thick chin bezel. Honestly, I was never bothered by the bezel because I was distracted by this gorgeous display. And another good thing about the display is the ability of the auto brightness feature to adapt to the environment. I'm happy that the brightness level of the display is always somewhere where I want it to be when I need it to be. Do take note though that there's no HDR playback support here. However, there is HD playback when watching on streaming services such as Netflix. And since the display is OLED, there is an in-display fingerprint scanner as well. I was also surprised by the performance of this scanner since Samsung is notorious for having slow scanners. I mostly got into the phone after one or two attempts and I'm very satisfied with it. So that's for the display. The second best thing about this phone is the battery. The Galaxy A31 is packing 5000 mAh battery and charges via USB-C up to 15 watts. The first couple of charges felt like I was getting above average, but after the phone has settled, I consistently get up to 8 hours of screen time in a 24-hour runtime. Considering I play a lot of games, the battery on this one is solid. The only thing that I didn't like is how long it takes to charge. It's understandable given the massive capacity, but 2 hours and 15 minutes is a bit slow for a 2020 phone. Now that's the top 2 best things about the Galaxy A31. What about the rest then? The classic design isn't polarizing, but that doesn't mean I hate it. There's no creaking or any sign of substandard quality here. In fact, I even like how tactile the buttons are despite the plastic material. You still get the headphone jack at the bottom as well as the single firing speaker, but I recommend using a wireless accessory since the speaker quality is very teeny. The other thing that I didn't really like is the weak vibration motor. I like turning on tap to vibrate when typing and the Galaxy A31 didn't give me the decent tactility that I'm looking for, unlike the Redmi Note 9S which is significantly less expensive than this phone. Additionally, there's no print stud screen protector out of the box as well as Gorilla Glass. Now what about the cameras? Samsung has upgraded the cameras here. Now with a 48 megapixel sensor, 8 megapixel ultrawide, and a pair of 5 megapixel lens for macro and depth. Usually with this kind of specs you would get 4K video and decent stabilization. Well, that's not the case here. This can only record up to 1080 at 30 frames. And unfortunately, even the ultrawide footage is shaky. Quality wise, the A31 loves to overexpose the highlights and the details almost look like painting. I wouldn't rely on this phone for video. However, the photos are a bit of a different story. When taking photos, the viewfinder shows a punchy image, but once you take the shot and view it from the gallery, it's like an entirely different photo. Fortunately, the photos look decent, and the cameras also bias towards the cooler side. Portrait mode though with the main camera needs to be more accurate when isolating the subject. 
but I was surprised by how sharp the subject turned out to be. The macro lens felt like it's not a macro lens. You can't get really close to the subject, so I think you'll have better chances with the main sensor. For the 20 megapixel selfie camera, its performance is underwhelming. Even with great lighting, photos look soft and out of a cheap budget phone. I guess the most surprising thing about this camera is the lack of night mode and pro video mode. With One UI 2.1, I'm a bit disappointed that MediaTek lacks the support for it, which then brings us to the Helio P65 chipset. The P65 launched in June 2019, making it a one-year-old chipset. Compared to newer chipsets, this one is behind the game. However, it can still hold its ground, albeit with frequent stutters. Games like Exo's Heroes are playable at best, while Battle Royale games would require medium settings for a decent experience. As for day-to-day -day tasks, the performance is not as snappy as its competitors, but I never found it to be an issue. You will notice stutters when scrolling through feeds, however, disabling auto-playing videos made things a lot smoother. Overall, the A31 is enough for a casual user, but if you're looking to make this as a work phone or a gaming phone, I suggest looking for alternatives. Now, is the Galaxy A31 something I can recommend for a sub $250 phone that provides decent performance, decent cameras, long battery life, and great display? In a world where the Galaxy M31 doesn't exist, then sure. But the Galaxy M31 exists. That phone is less expensive at 13,990 pesos and even provides you 4K recording, 64 megapixel camera, an Exynos chipset that offers night mode, a 6000 mAh battery, and the same Super AMOLED display. That's it for the Galaxy A31 review. Until the next one, stay safe.